Hey Joel, you guys have been doing UTVs for a long time, but you got some new models to show us, right? Yeah, so we've been doing UTVs now for almost 10 years. We started with our Mecaron. Okay. Uh, we've introduced the K9, and now we're introducing our K9 with factory cab heating and air. Ooh, that sounds good. Let's take a closer look. Sounds good. Joel, I thought you said it was a fully factory cab. What happened to the door? It is. Um, so the door is, is made to be removed easily. Um, it just slides into the hinges there. Oh, okay. And uh, release the air cylinder, and it will come off so that you know, some people in the summertime, they want to actually be able to feel the outside air yeah. uh, and enjoy being outside. So being able to take the doors off, uh, even though it's factory cabs, still gives you the opportunity to enjoy a little bit of the outside in the summertime. But you can have air conditioner if you want it or uh, just heat in the wintertime. Yeah, and for us, it kind of allows us an opportunity for you to show me around on the inside. Why, it does. Why don't we have a look here? What? Tell me about this unit. So standard features of the K9, uh, automotive styling, tilt steering wheel, um, <clears throat> turn signal, headlight operation, just like you'd see in a car. Mm -hmm. um, and then your uh, two range reverse lever. Okay. Uh, manually selectable uh, four wheel drive and okay. diff lock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also manually selectable uh, parking brake. Analog gauges. Mm -hmm. Uh, parking brake right here. So yeah. now the, the new features are the implementation of the heating and air conditioning ah, system yeah. there with the nice convenient uh, controls. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed speakers up here. Speakers are, are already uh, mounted in the cab. Um, <clears throat> rear view mirror. Uh, we've also got a dual USB port. Okay. Um, and I believe one of those is a faster charging rate than the other one. Um, so that the guys that want uh, uh, one's a two amp hour and one's a one. So yeah. you, you really need to get that quick charge on your phone. This rear view mirror that you mentioned is a wide angle. It is. So it um, it gives you a little bit of a panoramic view as you kind of look out the rear view mirror there. Now I mentioned the speakers, but this one has a radio. This one does have a radio. Uh, so the radio will be optional. Okay. Wiper, washer kit. Mm -hmm. uh, so it comes standard with a uh, front windshield washer and wiper. Now, if the door was on here, it had a rear view mirror on it too. Yeah, so it would have a side view mirror as an option, just like an automobile. Okay, enough of this kind of talk. Can we take a look under the hood? We can. Joel, I notice under the hood here, looks like the HVAC system. Yeah, so the HVAC system is there. Um, <clears throat> the standard K9, there'd be an under hood storage uh, okay. in that spot. Okay. Um, it looks like it fits nicely. All that looks good. I can e still get to the radiator here. Yeah, so all your maintenance checkpoints are still accessible. Um, and again, uh, fits nice and neat, tucks in uh, very comfortably right there under the hood. Okay, let's talk about lighting a little bit. I see lights, the regular headlights here. I see work lights. T tell me about standard option, what do you got? Okay, so um, the working lights, front work lights, uh, rear work lights, and the fog lights would all be LED. Um, they would all be options. Okay. Uh, the standard headlights are pretty bright. But uh, for certain situations, uh, whether you're out uh, riding around at night in the snow, checking cows, whatever, uh, there's options for some LED uh, to uh, add a little bit of brightness to your, to your evening there. How about this guard? That looks like an option to me. Uh, the guard is standard. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so it helps keep everything uh, that you need to run over, uh, keeps, just pushes it right under the machine. Okay, because I'm always running into stuff. You know, with a diesel, I was wondering, are there any attachments you can actually pull with this thing? Can, can we get any work done? I think my finance committee might be more likely to approve it. Oh, definitely. If I can actually do there, some There's work. all sorts of work we can do with this. Okay, well, let's take a look. Sounds good. We got the bed open here. It's actually very easy to open. It's got a spring-loaded air cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. And one thing I notice is, look at this bed liner. It's all steel, it's got a factory sprayed in bed liner. Um, one of the neat features on the tailgate is a single handle, just like your pickup truck, so you don't have to reach around to each side of the bed to open the tailgate. Yeah, and it goes down really easily. It does. It snaps right there in place. Also got hooks inside the bed and outside the bed to tie stuff down with. Okay. And then moving on back, I see this uh, nice hitch here that we've got hitched to our attachment. Yeah, so you've got a two inch receiver, um, so you can just slide anything in. Uh, right now we've got a two inch drop in it for this cedar. Oh, okay. Hey, the cedar. We should take a better look at the cedar here. It's, uh, well, you've had it for a little while, right? Yeah, so we introduced this last year. Um, this was a new item, a three-point hitch or towable. So that's a really neat feature. 
Okay, so we're using the towable version here, and that's just kind of a little adapter on the front mm -hmm. to convert the three-point hitch mount. And then along with that comes these wheels. That's right. Um, and that's where you're, uh, you've got an electric actuator, looks like. Uh, so there. you can do full hydraulic or you can do electric over hydraulic. Uh, for this model, we just selected the electric over hydraulic. Uh, you get a nice little controller in the cab, just simple toggle switch up and down. Okay. And if you were running this on a tractor, you probably wouldn't have the lift assist wheels back there. Yeah. So if this was a three-point hitch version, there'd be no wheels on the rear and then the, the tongue assembly would just pull right off. Okay. So I see two seed boxes. Mm -hmm. This one, you uh, put different seeds in them? What yeah, do, so this do? one's your cool season grasses. Uh, the rear box is for legumes. Okay. Um, so a little bit bigger seed with a cool season versus lagoon is very small. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got all sorts of uh, uh, adaptability for how aggressive you want it to cut. And um, Okay, yeah, I see the disc blades here on mm -hmm. the front. And they look like they can rotate just yeah, like so, on a disc harrow. Yep, so you can gang them to, to take out more uh, turf as you go by. Uh, depending on soil conditions, or you can run them straight to just leave the little indentations as drop seed. Yeah, and I think there's some spikes under there, and then I think there's, uh, it looks like cultic packer wheels. Yeah, so the spike roller actually is the, the tool that runs the seeder. Okay. Um, so as you move forward, uh, you know, that runs the seed boxes, and then the cultic packer comes back just to give it a little bit of a nice smooth finish if you're on something that's already been, uh, uh, like you you tilled it or something of that nature just gives it a nice finish when it comes off. Okay, so being the spikes are, are actually the ground drive. It's mm -hmm. ground drive. So that it means is ground it's going to be accurate in seed delivery, really, no matter what speed we go with, within a certain reason. That's correct. Okay. Now, if we do want to do some calibration, I think there's some built in calibration tools. Yeah, so you've got this uh, T handle here. Uh -huh. um, you can take that off and then you can rotate the handles. And in the owner's manual, it gives you this nice guide to. Uh, be able to measure how much seed comes out based on the number of rotations for the seed and you can determine how uh, what your application rate is and then set it to where you need it to be. Yeah, for, for a seed in our area, we spend $125 for 50 pounds. Ooh, now, what, are you, what are you planting? Well, I plant nothing but the finest, of course, Joel, okay. but the point is I don't want to waste any. No, you definitely do not. So I can probably, if I get this calibrated right, I can save a good bit of money. You can? I really like the looks of this cedar, and I think with the nylon type cultic packers, that's going to allow us to pick it up even mm -hmm. with a subcompact tractor. That's correct. And uh, we're going to do a great job seeding with this. Yeah, I'm ready to try it out. How about you? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go.